Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, present Big Town. Extra, extra. Here's Steve Wilson and story of reckless driving captained death at the wheel. Extra, extra. Yes, Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, are proud to present Big Town. The story of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have just heard is the sound of the average man's atom bomb. It kills more people in America than died at Hiroshima. It is the thing most likely to maim or kill you or yours. Not you? Then listen to this big town story of Bill Smith, a reasonably good driver, but careless. Just careless. Absent-minded at times. Merrily, yeah, roll along, roll along, roll up, oh, oh. Golly, that was a close shave. Hey, you, what's the idea of cutting me off? Sorry, mister, but no harm done. No thanks to you. Now, wait a minute, mister, I never touched you. Because I pulled off the road, look where I am. A few more inches and I, I would have turned over in the ditch. I said I'm sorry. Sorry? You'd be a lot sorry if you turned my car over and killed my wife and daughter. Joe, please, don't make a scene. Control your temper. I'll keep out of this, Mary. Yeah, take it easy, mister. It was my fault, but I'm not a road hog, a reckless driver. I've never had a serious accident. Yeah, you're lucky, but from the looks of your fenders... Well, everybody gets scratches and dents. And it's always the other guy's fault to alibi Ike's like you. Joe, please, nothing happened. Well, I'd like to make something happen. Teach this guy a lesson. Now, look here. No need to get tough. I said I'm sorry. Sorry, huh? Of all the misused words. You know, I'd like to knock all your... All right. All right. What's the trouble? What happened to him? Officer, this guy deliberately cut me off and forced me off the road. I've admitted it was my fault, officer. I said I'm sorry and there's no damage done. Uh-huh. From the looks of it, no thanks to you if it's true. Let's see your driver's license. I'll bet you find plenty of violations on it, officer. Here you are, officer. Now, I resent this man's calling me a reckless driver. And I resent being forced off the road, almost turning over in the ditch. My family almost killed by a careless fool. Who's a fool, wife? For two cents, hold I'll it, take your... Hold it, hold it, both of you. You want to make a complaint, mister? Yeah, if it'll teach this guy a lesson. All right. You're going to make it to the judge in traffic court tomorrow morning. Oh, now, wait a minute, officer. Can't we settle this here and now? Don't try bribing me, Smith. I'm giving you a ticket on a charge of reckless driving. Henry Martin, your charge was speeding in a restricted zone. $50 or 10 days. Next case. William Smith. William Smith. All right, here, sir. Oh, is this a case you're interested in, Mr. Wilson? Yes, Your Honor. Now, why have you singled him out? The charge is reckless driving. There's no collision, no one injured. Well, because he's a good example of the average careless driver who's never had a serious accident and doesn't believe he ever will have one. Yes, I get dozens of them every day. Excuse me, Your Honor, but I'd like to plead guilty and uh, pay my fine. Uh, just a minute, Smith. Before I deal with your case, I want you to meet a friend of the court, Steve Wilson of the press. Wilson of the Press? Yes. The paper that's been running the reckless driving campaign? Yes, Mr. Smith, and I'd like to be a friend of yours as well as the courts. Well, why pick on me? I didn't do any damage, hurt anybody. Never had a serious accident. According to the arresting officer, you came within inches of one last night. So I suppose I'm going to be the goat of Wilson's newspaper campaign with pictures of me, my family, my car, my home. That depends on you, Smith. What do you mean, Your Honor? Your offense is not so much a momentary lapse of care, which is a human failure, but to quote the arresting officer, a stubborn refusal to consider yourself a careless driver in spite of the record on this license. Passing through red light, crossing double line on dangerous curve, collision due to faulty brakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Why single me out? What's Wilson doing here on the bench with you? Am I going to be tried in his newspaper, made the laughing stock of my community, held up to ridicule? No, Mr. Smith. As I told you, Steve Wilson is here as a friend of the court. Well, what's that got to do with me? Why single me out? Mr. Wilson has one simple request of you, Mr. Smith. What's that? Uh, explain it, Mr. Wilson. I'd like to have just two hours of your time, Mr. Smith. What for? 
to convince you that you are a reckless driver. I'm not a reckless driver. Potential killer at the wheel of a deadly weapon. I am not. I'm a good average driver. Exactly. And because you represent the average driver who's never had a serious accident and doesn't believe he ever will, I would like two hours of your time. To do what? I want you to come with me. Where? On a little trip that I hope will change your dangerous state of mind, make you realize the extra responsibility anyone takes when he touches the wheel of a car. Oh, now, look here, Your Honor. I'm a citizen. I have some rights. Do I have to do this? No, Mr. Smith. You have every right to refuse. But this court is in complete accord with what Mr. Wilson's paper is trying to do. And I now give you the choice of going with Steve Wilson for two hours or a fine of $50 or ten days. All right. Where are we going? Let's call it the journey of a modern Scrooge. With photographers and reporters, I suppose. No, not one picture or one line will be printed in the press, Mr. Smith, without your permission. All right. But you'll never convince me I'm a reckless driver. When do we start? Meet me at the office of the Big Town Illustrated Press at 10 o'clock tonight. Thus, fighting editor Steve Wilson makes a deal with a man who might be any of us who drive a car. And for the result so important to all of us, whether we walk or ride, we'll continue in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Because of its purifying ingredient, Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Yes, and it's mild. Safe even for baby's tender skin. No wonder Life Boy Health Soap is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Keeps you fresh and attractive. Protects you as no other leading soap can. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now, back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson's headline story of a crusade against reckless driving, captioned, Death at the Wheel. With Bill Smith, an average careless driver, sentenced to go on a modern Scrooge's journey in the hope of convincing him that he is a dangerous driver, Steve and Lorelei Kilburn, one of his ace reporters, are taking Smith to a public institution in the cab of a friend of Harry the Hack. Hey, Mr. Wilson, Miss Kilburn. Why are we going out uh, to... Don't say it, Joe. We want Mr. Smith to be convinced of his own free will. You're wasting your time. Nothing you can show me will convince me I'm a reckless driver. Just because I've had a couple of minor accidents. We're not going to try to convince you, Smith. Just let you see for yourself. Okay. The judge said I only had to stay with you for two hours. I think that'll be time enough. Then I'll be free of that reckless driving charge. I hope so. And remember... You don't print my picture or a line about my arrest without my permission. That's right. That's the deal. Thanks. And I'm getting off easy. Where are we going first? You'll find out in a few minutes. Oh, the uh, side entrance is in the next block, Joe. We won't be long. Pull up and wait. Right, boss. And as a guy who has to drive and keep out of accidents to make a living, I hope you can sell this gent a bill of goods. Well, arguments and facts are no good, Joe. To paraphrase a phrase, convince a careless driver against his will and he's a reckless driver still. This is it. Come along, Mr. Smith. This is the first stop. Uh, you want me with you, Steve? No, Laurel, I come in and get on the phone. I've made arrangements with the city police and parkway patrol to give us the time and place of our second stop. Where will you be if I get the word? In the superintendent's office. Hey, what is this place? Looks like a public building. It is, Mr. Smith. What's the idea? I want you to meet an authority on reckless driving. Come on, Mr. Smith. Let's go. Good evening, Professor. Ah, 
Good evening, gentlemen. Evening. This is Mr. Smith, and he would like to hear your lecture on driving, Professor. Oh, yes. Make it short, Prof. Wilson hasn't much time to convince me I'm a reckless driver. Oh, it's quite short to the point. Well, skip the facts and figures. My insurance agent stuffed me with them when he tried to sell me an accident policy. Oh, but you misunderstand, sir. I lecture on how to become a reckless driver. What? Yes. The rules for reckless driving are quite simple. First, you must have a car. The more powerful, the better. But any car will do. Be sure the brakes are faulty. Hey, wait a minute. No. We haven't much time, and bad tires are a tremendous help. Also, only one headlight. Of course, if you must have two headlights to see your victim, be sure to use your brights and blind him so that he can't see you. Well, look here, Wilson. What kind of joke is this? This is not a joke. Exactly, Mr. Smith. Or is it Brown or Jones? It's such a common name. I'm somewhat absent-minded. It's Smith. And I'll say you are. Yes. Being absent-minded helps, too, especially on a crowded highway and fast-moving traffic. Just think about your income tax. Flip one car and your chances are excellent to bag a dozen victims. Wilson, I didn't come here to be kidded. You're not being kidded. Quite so. And now, for other good places for reckless driving, illustrated by my charts... What charts? Oh, dear, I misplaced them again. But no mind... Any blind curve is perfect hunting for victims. With luck, you may get a busload of school children. Wilson, I've had enough of this gag. Not unless you want to break our agreement and pay your fine. Yes. Don't mind fines. Money is cheap. But life is cheaper. And any crossroad is a happy hunting ground. Don't stop. The other fool may not either. That makes it a sporting proposition. What do you hope to gain by this, Wilson? That remains to be seen. Yes. Don't be convinced by slogans, Brown. Or is it Jones? Smith. Oh, yes, Smith. Don't believe that stuff about a rolling ball being followed by a running child. It's silly. Prove it. Win a reckless driving prize. A school block or a play street is the best. Pin a child on your bumper and he'll give you a ribbon for your chrome work dyed red with blood. Listen, you, whoever you are, I've had enough of this. Yes, quite so. My time is almost up. Only one more point. Glasses. If you need glasses, don't ever wear them when driving. Uh, Sorry, Professor, it's time for your next lecture. Oh, yes, I'm late again. There's never time enough. I I must go. You'll excuse me, I'm sure. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, Professor. Let's go back. Yes, we must go. There's never time enough. So little time in life. So much in death. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. All right, Wilson, who is that goof? He was a professor of history at a famous university. What is he now, besides being nutty as a fruitcake? An authority on reckless driving and fatal accidents. How'd he get that way? He started out like you, refusing to believe that at the wheel of a car, carelessness and recklessness are one and the same. What happened? He caused an accident. Killed his wife and two children. Why? Oh, wait a minute. That guard. What is this place, prison? In a way, yes. A prison of the mind, Mr. Smith. A nut house. Asylum. A mental hospital, Smith. And the professor? An inmate. And maybe for the rest of his life. Poor guy. But that doesn't prove I'm a Just a minute. Come in. I didn't expect this to convince you. Steve. Uh, yes, Arnie. Par- Parkway Police Headquarters just got a patrol car flash and a bad accident on Long Hill Curve. Yes, I knew there would be one somewhere every hour. All right, Smith. If a living ghost of past folly doesn't convince you, perhaps the sight of the present and a preview of your own possible future will do it. Let's go. <laughs> Boss, Miss Kilburn, as my friend Harry the Hackett say. Uh, say it, Joe, and as we would say to Harry, get us to the bottom of Long Hill Curve as quickly as the law allows. Right. We're only about a mile from there now. 
Are we going to show Mr. Smith some of them slabs? Later, Joe. There's been another accident there just a few minutes ago. Holy mackerel. Doesn't anybody believe in signs? Look at them along here. Slow. Steep hill. Curve. Well, some drivers would rather look at the scenery, Joe. Well, if this state would spend more money on the roads and less on signs, there wouldn't be as many accidents. Not proven, Mr. Smith, but I promise not to argue with you. Long hill curve coming up, Mr. Wilson. Hey, red blinker lights off the road on the right. Uh, there's probably a wrecking car or an ambulance. Uh, pull off the road, Joe. Oh, there is an ambulance, Dave. Somebody must be hurt. Yikes. Look at that wrecked jalop wrapped around that tree. Somebody must have got it sure. As they're putting someone in the ambulance, come on, Mr. Smith. Now, wait a minute, Wilson. Now, what's the point of rubbernecking on somebody else's bad luck? I've never stopped at the scene of an accident in my life. This is more than rubbernecking. You made a deal with a judge two hours with me or $50 or 10 days. All right. But you've wasted an hour. All right. I hope not. Uh, Steve, there's a trooper coming this way. Sorry. Move on, please. What'd I tell you, Wilson? Wilson? Are you Steve Wilson of the press? Yes, officer. Your headquarters notified us of this accident. Oh, yes. We got the message. You'll be here in a few minutes. What can we do for you? Nothing, officer. Now, don't let us get in the way. Anybody seriously injured? Yeah. Kid got it bad in that sedan wrapped around the tree. A child? Dead? No. They're putting her in the ambulance. Want to get some pictures? No, no pictures. How did it happen, officer? Well, the sedan got sideswiped by that convertible over there. Southbound over the double line. The sedan went out of control, crashed into that open. What about the driver of the convertible that caused the accident? Oh, she's over there in the patrol car. Nice woman. Not a scratch, but hysterical. Never had an accident before. Admits it was her fault. Didn't slow down for the curve. There goes the ambulance. Oh, can't they read signs? That ambulance driver is in no hurry to get to the hospital. Well, the doc says there isn't much use. Wilson, let's get out of here. Let's get on with it. No, there's something over there under that tree I want to show you before we go, Smith. All right, show it to me and let's go. You've less than an hour left. I think that will be time enough. Come along. Would you lend me your flashlight, officer? Sure. Who's this guy, Mr. Wilson? Just a driver paroled in my custody for two hours for a traffic violation. Oh, yeah. I made the pinch. He cut in on a guy and almost forced him into the ditch. Nothing happened, officer. Nobody got hurt. You know that. You're just a lucky guy, mister, but don't bank on it lasting. Or you'll draw yourself a ticket to the morgue. Please. Please, officer. That poor child. Please drive me where they're taking her. I've got to do something to help. To help. Ah, take it easy, lady. We'll be going in just a minute. As soon as my partner gets here. Hey, Jack. She wants to go to the hospital. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Wilson. Please. I must do something. Get the best doctors. Anything. Anything. Everything. Go ahead, officer. Okay. Keep the flashlight if you need it, Mr. Wilson. Let's go, Pete. Thanks. I'll return it to you later tonight. Please hurry. There may be so little time. So little time. Quiet here now, isn't it, Smith? A moment of carelessness. A clash of steel against steel. Man's triumph of engineering against nature's unyielding oak. The frantic efforts to mend and make amends. And suddenly, except for twisted wreckage, peaceful silence. As if it had never been. Save that for an editorial, Wilson. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to preach. I was just thinking out loud. Well, show me what you've got to show me and let's get away from here. They're right over here, Mr. Smith. They? Yes, haven't you noticed them along the roads? Wherever there's been a fatal accident? No, what? Little white slabs with names and dates and the facts of each death at the wheel. We call them symbolic cemeteries. There's one. Throw the flashlight on it, Steve. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. James Hogan died here New Year's Eve, 1948, cause intoxication. I, I don't drink. The next one says, Albert Morgan died here, blowout while speeding. I don't speed. And the next one says, Nick Ferreira and Nora Green, age 17, died here, cause one arm driving, believed to have been kissing. The kiss of death. Oh, stop it. I've had enough. I know you mean well, but I don't do these things. Drink, speed, neck. I, I've never had a serious accident, and I'm not going to have one. Now, let's get out of here. No, wait, Mr. Smith. Look at this last slab. All right. So what? There's nothing on it. No, not now, but tomorrow it may bear the name of that child in the ambulance. Or you, or yours. No, it won't happen to me. Let's get out of here. All right, Mr. Smith, but you still owe me one half hour of your time. All right, let's get it over with. Where are we going? To a place where everyone who drives a car should go before they're taken there. Let's go. (laughs) 
ladies and gentlemen, will you come with us? I think it will be worth your while when in a moment we rejoin Steve Wilson in tonight's timely story. Life Boy Gets Skin Cleaner. Life Boy Gets Skin Cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Doctors have proved it. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors compared results. They found that Life Boy, with its quick, Rich, purifying lather cleanses and protects better than any other leading soap. And Life Boy is milder, too. So bathe with mild, refreshing Life Boy every day. Remember, Life Boy gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now, back to Big Town and Steve Wilson's timely and dramatic story on reckless driving, captioned, Death at the Wheel. This is the children's ward, Miss Kilburn, gentlemen. Are you sure it's all right for us to go through? Yes, if you'll be quiet. It's late, but most of them are asleep. All right, Mr. Smith. Five more minutes and you're free to go. All right. I thought I was getting off easy being paroled in your custody for two hours. You are getting off easy, Smith. I could have taken you to the morgue. Will you step inside the ward, gentlemen? I want to close the door. Yes, please lead the way, nurse. Not all these children are victim of auto accidents, Mr. Wilson. Just point out the ones who are, nurse. The little girl in the next bed on the right in the tractions, hit by a truck, into vertebral rupture, a severe spinal injury. She may not walk again. The next bed on the left is an amputation case. Car turned over. Father needed glasses, I believe. <laughs> that boy has just been told he's blind. Knocked down in front of his school, according to our admission report. Wilson, get me out of here. There's only a little farther to the other door to the reception room. Get me out of here. child behind the screen is dying. There's nothing we can do. Wilson, in the name of heaven, get me out of here. Steady, Smith. Open the door, nurse. Very well, Mr. Wilson. Shall I get Mr. Smith something, a sedative? No, no. No, I'll be all right. I'll be... I'll be all right in a minute. In a minute. Will that be all, Mr. Wilson? That's all, nurse. Thank you. But, doctor, 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 isn't there anything you can do? Mr. Wilson... That woman, she's the one who caused that accident on Long Hill Curve. Yes, they brought her victim here, but this I did not arrange. Doctor, please, try. Get specialists. Do everything you can. It's my fault I was careless, reckless for just one moment. If anything happens to that child, I'll never forgive myself. Never forget. Never drive a car again. Never, never, never. I'm sorry, madam. Everything that could be done has been done. But neither tears, nor money, nor the best medical skill in the world will help. The child is dead. I'm very sorry. Dead? Oh, no. No. Wait. Wait, doctor. Wilson, listen to me. We made a deal. Yes, and your time is up. You can go. Go on, Smith. Get out of here. No, wait. Wait. I've been a stubborn fool. Now I see what you've been driving at. It only takes one careless moment to make a reckless driver. You made a deal with me. I'll make a deal with you. Yes? What is your deal? Go ahead. Play up my case. Take pictures, all you like. Use me as Exhibit A in any campaign you run to convince folks like me that death is... Always at the wheel of any car. (laughs) 
ladies and gentlemen, the story you have just heard speaks for itself. And now we'd like to have you hear from a man who lives with his problem every day of the year. Ned H. Dearborn, president of the National Safety Council, direct from Chicago. Friends, you have just heard a remarkable radio drama. Lever Brothers deserve great credit for thus trying to help reduce the traffic toll in the United States. Few people realize that traffic accidents have taken nearly one million lives since we, as a nation, began to keep traffic death records. That was in 1905. In that year, motor vehicles were involved in 400 deaths. Last year, the toll was 32,000. And in 1949, smash-ups in which injuries will be suffered will average one a minute, unless every citizen accepts personal responsibility for the safety of himself, his family, and his fellow citizens. I sincerely hope each of you will accept that personal responsibility. If you do, there will be far fewer funerals in 1949 and far fewer heartaches. So be careful, Mr. and Mrs. America. The life you save may be your own. Thank you very much, Mr. Dearborn. And now, before hearing about next week's big town adventure, here are Steve Wilson and Lorelei. Friends, if you haven't entered Lever's sensational $50,000 travel contest, better hurry. Would you like to explore Paris and London, see Cairo, visit Honolulu and other famous foreign cities? Now, this contest is your chance to win the vacation of a lifetime. Just imagine, friends, you can win a round-the-world trip for two with all travel expenses paid. Or choose $10,000 in cash. Yes, and there are second prizes, too, 15 of them, with an all-expense trip to Europe for each winner. Or $2,500 in cash. Plus 400 other prizes of $10 each. It's easy to enter, but you must act soon. Finish this statement in 25 words or less. I like Bath Size Life Boy because... Send each entry with a box front from Bath Size Life Boy to Lever Tour the World Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. That's Box 1, New York 8, New York. Only residents of continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii are eligible. Get a free entry blank with complete rules at your store right away. Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you another hard-hitting racket expose captioned The Prisoner's Song. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting editor Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Collin as Lorelei Kilburn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Next Tuesday night, same time, same station, you'll hear the newsboy calling... Extra, extra, he roll about it! The story of Steve Wilson and the headline story of The Prisoner's Song, brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap, another fine lead for product, Extra Extra. Lever Brothers Company have amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with Solium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Casey Allen, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.